Chris Broussard, uh, our friend, had said yesterday it's like the Lakers are very confident. Arash Markazi yep. came on and said Lakers feel really good about this. Yep. Can you confirm, deny, what do you hear, Kawhi Lakers? I've heard a lot as far as the Lakers are concerned if it ends up being in L.A. I just got off the phone, and this is the way the last 24, 36 hours have been. Uh, someone saying that they thought that Toronto had a very good shot to sign him to a one-on-one and for him to stay with Toronto, take that one year, then it puts him in the category of a super max for bigger money and ultimately has the opportunity to run it back uh, in the Eastern Conference. If he stays in Toronto, he, they are the prohibitive favorites to win another championship. Let me ask you this, though. So uh, the Lakers would then do what with all that cap space? Utilize it to pick up whatever veterans are out there. Danny to Green. Fill out. It changes the dynamic for them in a big way. They go from being the favorites without question, the, the, the team that has the target on them, to being in the mix in the Western Conference. Just a team. Yes. I mean, look, team that's a contender, but it is wide open in the West. I don't put them – Vegas will give them the the odds. I don't. But – too many other questions. This is this for is them to fill. if they don't get Kawhi Leonard at seventeen year LeBron. Yes, and they're and they're a good team, but they'll have the worst bench in the league. It rolls back to all the questions that we have. Kawhi goes there; it takes a load off of everybody else. You're not questioning where LeBron is in the in the arc of his career. You're not questioning whether AD can stay healthy. You're not questioning a lot of things. But you, if you put Kawhi in that in that equation. You take him out, and now it's, okay, is that enough? Can LeBron stay healthy? Can AD stay healthy? Who else are they going to have that's going to add to the mix? It puts a lot of weight on a lot of other things. Yeah, it's, uh, they've, they've pushed their poker chips to the middle of the table. Let's um, shift to Kevin Durant. You had said this, you live in San Francisco, that he always felt a little bit like a second-tier yep. second guy to Steph. Reports have come out in the last hour that – very much, you were right on, that, that KD kind of felt like, hey, it's not my city, it's not my organization, yeah. it's not my team. No matter what he did. I mean, he's a two-time Finals MVP. He's arguably the best player in the league. And yet, with the team and in the city that he's playing in, he's a second-tier guy. That's, that's, what he was, that's what he was living with. And ultimately, it was, I'd like to see if I could. The, the, the rings are, I go back to something that Aaron Rodgers said, like, Once he won the ring, he was, is that all there is? Is this it? This is the thing that everybody said I had to have. He had a couple of them. He's like, okay, so what's the next thing that I need to get? Three would be nice, stuck around for that. But ultimately, I'm trying to achieve and accomplish more than that. What's the next challenge for me? Where can I go where I'm the guy? Now, here's the great question. Where he went, (laughs) I'm not sure that he accomplishes it there. He didn't get his dream scenario. His dream scenario was to play for the Knicks, either with Kyrie or Kawhi. He had to settle for the best thing that he, the next best thing, which was to leave the Warriors, to play in the New York area, and play with Kyrie. But he didn't get the dream scenario for Kevin Durant. In the end, the injury, how much did it change everything? Everything. It changed everything because. I believe that if without the injury, Kevin Durant is a New York Knick right now. And if Kevin Durant is healthy, the Knicks don't have any. uh, Kyrie Irving wasn't their first choice, but they don't have a problem signing Kyrie Irving along with Kevin Durant. If Kevin Durant is available and playing this next season, having Kyrie as the leader of their young team for a year and thinking, okay, what are we going to look like? Is this going to be another toxic spill like Boston? Didn't really want to do that. They would have done KD and Kawhi. And Kawhi was willing to meet with them, but it wasn't until the third. So then they were looking at the prospect of, okay, so we're not getting any assurance that Kawhi's coming with us. He's just having a meeting. If we don't have Kawhi, we're not getting KD that's too great of a risk to run. Let's go in another direction. Let's do what we can. We're not going to sign anybody to any max deals because the reality is outside of Kawhi and KD, there are no guys that are worth max deals. They could have gone out 
I guarantee you, if they had thrown max money at Kemba Walker, Tobias Harris, or Jimmy Butler, they would have got one or two of those guys. And as of right now, people would be saying, uh, you know what, the Knicks didn't get who they wanted, but it's, you know what, it's not bad. Plan B, it's okay. And I go back to when the TV money came in and everybody was signing the Otto Porters and the Tyler Johnsons and everybody, look at who they got and whatever. Everybody regrets those. Everybody regrets those deals. And I dare say that we're going to have a number of deals that are made this time around that people are going to regret. The Knicks still have work to do, but as opposed to they didn't get any of the big fish. They're not trapped. And they didn't, basically they said, look, we're not getting any of the big fish. We're not going to sign a little fish and put a magnifying glass on him and pretend that they're a big fish. Julius we'll Randle's contract is three years, not prohibitive. And, and he's, he's young. And he's, he's tw- a decent player. Yeah, No, he's, he is an underrated player. He, I, what I see in, in signing guys like Taj Gibson and Julius Randle. Good guys. And I feel as if this is part of the development of Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. Mitchell Robinson is their Pascal Siakam. Yes. So it's, it's – Let's get guys who are great pros, who work hard every day, yeah. who are going to maximize what Mitchell Robinson can be by playing against them on a daily basis in practice. That's what this is about. Okay, D'Angelo Russell to the Warriors feels like at the trading deadline, they're going to flip an all-star guard who, by the way, they're going to tell everybody how great he's been, what a good guy, and then as Clay's about three weeks out, they flip him for a legitimate big. It feels like a trade piece. Okay. I want to see that trade go down. I want to see who's going to take D'Angelo Russell for that money. This, ooh, that's the, that's the smell of desperation. Really? Oh, my goodness. He does not fit their DNA whatsoever. He's a younger Nick Young. He doesn't play D. He's a me guy. He doesn't play with a high basketball IQ. I am, I'm glad that D'Angelo has proved that he's not the bust that his experience in the Lakers suggested that he was, but you're giving up a future potentially unprotected pick to move Andre Iguodala in order to make the numbers work to sign D'Angelo. I am not not feeling this whatsoever. You don't think they can move him at the deadline? Everybody wants a shooting guard. uh, Okay. But for what? And for that contract. And as you said, What's that going to be like? I mean, what's he going to look like with the Warriors? I, they'll make him look better than anybody else could. Steph and, is the most mature star in the league. And as a result, people are going to go, well, if we don't have a Steph Curry, what, what's he going to look like with us? It, look, if, if Draymond Green doesn't end up killing him, Steve Kerr might. One of those guys is going to go, D'Angelo, come on. You just don't have any hope in it. <laughs> I, I don't. It's, it's it's just it's not a good fit. What's from what I know about the Warriors' DNA and what it's okay. been for the last few years, D'Angelo Russell does not fit. I said the same thing when Nick Young came in. I said, okay, you can always you can handle one knucklehead, but they couldn't even handle that one. By the way, uh, I'll join a very rare group: KD, Kyrie Irving, DeAndre Jordan. Hmm. I don't think that's a championship team. I think it's interesting. I agree with you. And while everybody is high on the nets right now, I need to see what Kyrie is as a leader. Hmm. I need to see what KD is a year from now. And DeAndre Jordan, you spent a lot of – that was, you know, basically a parting gift. That was paying DeAndre to come along in order for you to get the other two guys. I'm – I'm – look, I understand. You were last in attendance. Yes, no, I get that. Get that, totally. So – from a business standpoint, you had to do it. And if I was in their position, I'd probably have to do the same thing if I was running the Nets. But am I certain that it is going to work? I am not certain at all. 66 games. Kyrie Irving's missed that many in three years. Durant's missed 48 in three years. By the way, deep down privately, what do the Warriors think Durant's going to be off the injury? He's been hurt a lot in his career. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, they may feel as if we got the best of what was left of Kevin Durant. And ultimately, we'll see what he is on the other side. I can tell you that Kevin Durant has the same concerns. Everybody is saying he'll be the same. You know, he'll still be an effective, great player on the other side of the things. And Kevin Durant, one of the reasons why he wanted the Supermax and the sign and trade was, and, and to play with somebody else, was, well, what if I'm not? It's a legitimate question to ask. Rick Buecher, good seeing you, bud. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.